Okay, Jenny, we're trying out this thermal camera. I want to see what our temperatures are. So yeah, I'm actually uh, borrowing this thermal camera from a friend of mine to check out our animals today. I want to see what their temperatures are like relative to everything else. What's really cool about this is the camera lets you do these like little scans and it like shows you temperature ranges of objects. I can take pictures if I really need to. So you can see like, all right, we're looking at the tractor here. Here's what the temperature of the tractor looks like. Here's what the temperature of a barn cat looks like. Molly barn cat sitting on the porch. Now you can see Ginny sitting on the railing. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. In terms of temperature today, it's about negative three degrees as I start recording this video. That does not mean that like all the temperature is negative three degrees. It's just sort of like the official weather reading. Unfortunately, this little thermal camera that I'm borrowing doesn't do video. So it only lets me take still pictures like with this little trigger button here. Where the target is, that's what it's actually measuring. So that's what is like nine degrees right now. If I'm looking at the temperature of that snow bank over there but you can actually see the cattle in the background they're significantly warmer this is going to be kind of fun today let's check this out come on barn cats you're allowed to join me in this little experiment i love getting like new gizmos and contraptions to play with how's it going there audrey you're looking pretty toasty you're at about 23 degrees fahrenheit while the hay right in front of you is only about seven degrees Fahrenheit. And with apologies to all my uh, European and Canadian friends, we will be writing down the temperatures as much as possible in Celsius alongside the Fahrenheit readings that I give you. Would you look at that? That's pretty cool. The parts that are white are the hottest. So like her warmest spots are like her eyes. You can see like kind of the outer spots of her, like her back area, her hindquarters, the further away you are from her the uh, cooler she gets. Yep, look, her nose and her eyes are probably the biggest areas where the heat's escaping. And so that's why those are the warmest. Here we have Molly Barncat rolling around. Let's see how she's doing. Yeah, right, your head is the warmest. The back of your body, that's the coldest. Pretty cool. And here we have the hottest pup around. What's going on there, Toby Dog? How are you doing? Yeah, what do you think of this little contraption I got? Come on up, buddy. Oh, yeah, you're so soft and warm. No wonder if I look at you, you're like covered in heat. Let's actually look at you relative to one of the cats. It's be kind of cool to like use it as predator vision. Okay, Toby, we're coming, we're coming. And we can't forget we've got another dog we can check out as well. Maybe we'll even compare the new dog, Abby, to Toby Dog. Hey, little Abby girl, how is it going? You look excited to see me finally. Abby is getting much more settled here on the farm. A lot less skittish, a lot less scared. The last couple days I've been spending a lot of time with her. Hey, Abby girl, you remember me. We're friends now. Uh oh. <laughs> Looks like Abby knocked over the chair that I've been keeping in here. Yeah, I've been hanging out here and spending good chunks of the day just sitting outside with Abby, getting her comfortable with me. Come here, let me give you a proper hello. Come here, come here, girl. Oh, yeah. Come here, Abby, 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 Abby. You are settling in quite nicely. You are such a sweetheart. You know that? I can tell you're hungry. Let's feed you right out of the gate. All right, we're gonna give you some of this beef stew here today. I am finding that it's important to feed Abby and Toby separately for the time being. I wanna avoid conflict and make sure both dogs feel good about their place in the world. Okay, here you go, girl. Good girl. So what I'm doing here is actually continuing to condition her to be okay with me around food. You actually don't want them to get like too food protective. Oh, she's devouring there. Might have to give you some extra kibble because you're just a growing little puppy dog. You might have even noticed like when I first touched her, she jumped a little bit like she was startled. That was just simply because she's getting used to me and me being around her, but she's seeing that, oh no, she can eat and I'm not a threat, but I will take this away from her now. Nope. Sit, sit, sit. Good girl, yes. That's also sort of how you reward when you start the training process. Even though I'm still really just doing the familiarizing her with the farm process for right now. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Good job, Abby, good girl. Good girl, Abs. All right, Abby, you wanna come with me? We're gonna do chores, and you can spend time with Toby, and we'll take temperatures of all the animals. We are gonna have to get you some fresh water, though. Look at that bucket. Ooh, that thing froze solid this morning. Oh, I'm also gonna have to do a little pooper scooping. In case you're wondering, I leave the dogs the buckets of water, because it takes actually less time to freeze. But let's look at this bucket of water here. And the bucket of water is actually warmer than the air temperature. That means there's probably still some unfrozen water in there, it's sort of a higher thermal temp. Do you want to come play with Abby? You can get right through. Come on, Toby, come on. Toby, you know how to get over that. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't want to go over. He only wants to go under it. All right, I'm going to take both of you. We've got some chores to do. Here, Abby, we're going to even do chores today without the leash. You've been getting really good. Yeah, you're free. You're free. 
Yeah, I know. What are you gonna do with all this open space? I know, it's impressive. And you got the barn cats and Toby dog. Toby's wanting his food too. Yeah, you can go say hi to the crew. She's the new girl. Oh, uh, you gotta go to the bathroom? Okay, that's cool. It's like, what's she doing deucing on my land? Oh, Abby, you just stepped in it. Oh, wipe that off there, girly. Yeah, I know you don't know what to make of it there, huh, Ginny? <laughs> Ginny's still getting used to Abby. Ooh. <laughs> She's getting tense. Actually, the other day I captured their first, at least to my knowledge, their first interaction, and Ginny was not happy with her at all. Hey, Ginny. I want you to introduce you to Abby. Abby, this is Ginny. get stressed it's okay I know there's big dogs everywhere and they're all scary but Abby you're just a good little girl yes you are come on you guys can run around and play a little bit I'm gonna pour some water come here Abby you want some water it's fresh water you're thirsty Cold one today, I had extra water. Good morning, weird chickens. You know, it's cold today. You probably don't even want to come outside. Oh, Abby, if you want to drink from the water bucket, you're welcome to. She was just slurping from it while I had my back turned. And then as soon as I caught her, she got guilty. Yeah. You're a nervous gal. You want some water? Toby's just inspecting your backside. And those are chickens. We don't play with chickens. We are allowed to look at chickens. Toby's definitely giving her the once over. I'm not sure if you guys can see this on the camera, but you can see just a little bit of streaks of purple in her hair. That's because when she was a puppy, our breeder Kim over at Prancing Pony Farm, she likes to mark her dogs with breeding chalk from sheep and her color was purple. And so I can actually now go back to the old footage of Abby as a puppy and look at all the purple puppy videos and photos and say, yep, that's our girl Abby. I think it's a really good system. Abby, hey, Abby, no. No, get out of there. There you go. All right, let's go girl and boy. We're gonna go check on the chickens and the geese. I'm very curious to see about their temperatures as well. Yeah, you're probably wise to stay behind that fence line. I'm not quite sure you're ready to mix it up with the geese just yet. All right, let's get our thermometer up and running. The structure itself, not significantly different than the air temperature. But if we open up the goose house, we take a look at everybody. What you're going to actually see is, much like the cattle and the dogs and the cats, their heads are the biggest places where their heat is escaping. The rest of their bodies are actually pretty well sealed. Like, even look at the chickens. Look at this guy right here. You'll also notice it's a good 22 degrees warmer inside here than it was outside there. Let's see if we got any goose eggs today. Oh, we got a goose sitting on a nest. You doing your thing? You still laying? Or are you done? These goose nesting structures seem to be working pretty well. They are definitely using them. The rest of you gals, you can get out. Ooh, we got a fresh chicken egg. Look at that. See that fresh chicken egg? You can see it's warm versus in the back there, there's actually a frozen chicken egg. Not nearly as warm, but that chicken egg right there. Boom, that thing is hot. And this gal, she's getting ready to lay another one. He's like, why are you bothering me? All right, all right, I won't bother you all. If you guys wanna go out, you can go out. If you wanna stay in, you can stay in. I know it's cold today, so you generally like to stay inside a little longer when it's cold. And you, I'm gonna be back to check on you in a little bit. I bet you I'm gonna have a fresh goose egg right there. And I really wanna get that fresh goose egg, especially before it cracks and freezes. Yeah, the geese are gonna eat some of that chicken feed. Chickens have taken over the water pool. They seem thirsty. Look at our girl Carmen, wearing her Uggs, looking all dressed up. How's it going there, Carm? Geese are coming in there for some gulps. Kicking the chickens out. Geese are the, definitely the dominant species living inside of here. 
All right, we'll let them keep doing their thing. I gotta go check on Abby, make sure she's not getting into any trouble. I really shouldn't actually even have left her unsupervised like that, but she actually has Toby with her. And so it seems like he's keeping her in check, which is nice because I didn't have that luxury when Toby Dog was just a pup. All right, Abby girl, you wanna let out the ducks? Yeah, yeah, you ready for me to let out the ducks? Are we gonna settle first? You got so much nervous energy, girl. We're gonna say, release the Kraken! I didn't want to do it too loud and scare you. I seem to have more and more chickens staying in the duck house. Hey, no! 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 Not okay, Abby. Not okay. So I'm not sure how much you guys caught of that on camera, but Abby actually ended up chasing a chicken, which is why you heard me yelling at her like a psychopath. I know that seems harsh, and some people might say that's not how you're supposed to do it, but that's what I found actually worked really well with Toby Dog. You cannot let even remotely playful puppy behavior happen. I had to really reprimand her. I haven't officially started her training yet, but behavior like that, I can't even like tolerate for a little bit as I was reprimanding her, which by the way is not physical. It's simply a yelling thing and like a body language thing. She clearly knew that she screwed up. And so I think she's going to be better behaved. Isn't that right, Abby? Okay, Abby, you can come here. Come here, Abby. Come here. Come to me. Come here. Okay. You gotta remember, you can't chase birds. That's like rule number one on this farm. Above all else, do not chase the birds. You got that, Missy? I know. Yes, you're a sweet pup. You have those adorable brown eyes. But I cannot let you get away with those things. Because that's how you become a bad dog. And we want you to be a good dog, like Mr. Toby Dog. I think Toby's a little shell shock for me yelling at Abby as well. Ooh, ducks finally came out. <laughs> Morning, ducks. Good boy, Toby. You are the best dog. Sorry, Abby, don't mean to put you down like that, but Toby, you are so well behaved. You know, one comparison I did want to try to do with this heat gun is actually look at the two dogs and compare their temps. Toby's got a much thicker coat and he's bigger and he's older. So I just wanted to see, is there like any difference from a heat perspective? Abby's in there like about 25, 27 degrees. Toby in his back parts is like 16, 18, 14 degrees. That actually means that Toby does a little bit better of a job holding in his heat than Abby does. So because Abby is, yeah, like in the 20s, when I look at her body and her various body parts, that means more of her heat is escaping. It's kind of cool, actually. That is not something I would have really thought about, but it makes a lot of logical sense. Yeah, Abby, you're going to thicken up your coat. Now, the ducks, they leak a lot more heat relative to, say, Toby Dog. I think Toby might be the most heat-efficient animal on the farm. I mean, if I had to guess, it was going to either be Toby or maybe the cattle. I'll have to actually do a comparison here. We're going to give Toby a rating of about 15 degrees. And I know this isn't super, super scientific, but it's going to be enough to actually give you some good information. Oh, look, Abby's got a bone. I just want to know Toby's old bones, huh? That one's been kicking around for a little while. Toby doesn't seem to mind. But I bet you Toby's also really hungry right now, so we're going to feed him. A nice base of kibble going. Got a box of beef stew for Toby Dog. Oh, I'm sorry, turkey stew. I stand corrected. And then we always have Ginny Barncat trying to crash the Toby Dog food party. I will feed you in a couple minutes, Ginny. Don't worry. Ducks are making their parade to the water. Ginny, I do say you seem a little chilly today. I tried to convince you to come in last night, but you didn't seem to want it. When it gets to be like negative temps, I will actually bring the barn cuts in. Hey, hey, get out of there. Oh, can you hear Toby? He's getting a little annoyed with Abby now that he knows he's about to get fed and Abby's sort of checking out his food. There you go, Toby. Yeah, Abby, you gotta stay away. You gotta learn. Toby is the dominant dog here. So you cannot get in the mix there. And Abby, you can come with me. I'm gonna give you some extra kibble. Come on. All right, Abby, here you go. Here's some extra kibble. Enjoy. Okay, Abby, I'm gonna leave you here for a bit. I'll be back to visit you, and I'm gonna sit in that chair and respond to emails. But I think you're good here for now by yourself. Part of a livestock guardian dog training is actually teaching them to be okay by themselves. I mean, she'll pretty much always have Toby, but you want a dog that doesn't need human contact 24-7. All right, say bye to everybody, Abby. You be a good girl. Let's go check on the cattle. Oh, actually, I forgot. Before I check on the cattle, I gotta feed the duck. And I want to go check on my goose egg. It's not that bad a day there, geese. Sun's even coming out. Would you look at that? Got a nice freshly laid goose egg. So the goose egg itself is like 47 degrees. And then the ground temperature right around it is like 21, 22 degrees. Hey, Toby, you want to see this goose egg I got? 
He's actually probably gonna get a little jealous of the goose egg I got. Definitely feels nice and warm and fresh. You know, one question I often get is, because I'm allergic to duck eggs, like I can't eat duck eggs when I eat them, it's like I get food poisoning. People have asked me if I like am allergic to goose eggs and the answer is I'm not sure because I've actually never tried it because I've been too afraid. That might become a subject for a future video. I'd be curious if people want to actually see something like that. Or is the prospect of a video like that just absolutely revolting? Let me know down in the comments. All right, let's check the temperature again of our cattle and really study them and compare them and see who is the warmer animal. Is it Toby or the cat? Like in our midsection, it's like 38, 30 degrees, 34 degrees. Like see where it's all white and red? That's pretty warm over there. It tops out at 47 according to the meter. If you look at her head and neck, it's like in the 40s. You know, Toby, when you were looking at him, he was much much cooler. So I actually think Toby Dog with his thick fur is actually even more insulated than our Highland cattle, which is pretty remarkable. Look how much heat escapes too from their horns. Those things are like in the 50s. This was a very cool tool. If you guys found this to be an interesting video, I might actually invest in like a better quality one of these. This is just something I'm borrowing from a friend that's kind of not to knock his equipment, but like a slightly lower end version. Like I might get a cool version that can like grab video and the like too, which would be pretty cool. Hey Jen, you hungry? Yeah, Ginny is clearly hungry right now. Get that butthole out of my face. <laughs> I'll feed you, hang on girl. Here's some fresh water. Get you some food. We're gonna get Ginny some food. Here you go girl. 